Let us begin our session with a short prayer. Please join me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, I come before you to thank you for a new day. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for my home and the beautiful family you have given me. Thank you for all the things I have and for the things I don't have. I do not worry about those things because I know that in due time you will provide for me. I don't know what this day might bring, therefore I put my trust in you. Fill me with your peace, the peace that surpasses all our understanding. Cover me with your presence, comfort me in my mind. Give me a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Cause me to rest and not be stressed. Let rivers of joy and happiness fill me every moment of this day. Amen. The following are reminders in using your modules. Number one, use the module with care. Number two, don't forget to answer what I know. Number three, read carefully the instructions. Number four, observe honesty and integrity in answering your module. Number five, finish the task at hand before proceeding to the next. And number six, return this module to your teacher once you're done. Here are the day's objectives. Number one, identify the following parts of a research paper. Letter A, background of the study. Letter B, statement of the problem. Letter C, research hypothesis for quantitative research. Letter D, significance of the study. Letter E, uh, scope and delimitation of the study. Letter F, conceptual framework. G, definition of terms. And number two, describe the importance of each part of the research paper. And lastly, formulate clearly the statement of the problem. Let's have a preliminary activity. The task is for you to identify the basic parts of a research paper described in each statement. Let's have this first question. And the options are on the topmost part of this slide, okay? So number one, this part serves as the plan or the blueprint of the study. Do you have an answer for this? Correct, the answer is conceptual framework. That's right. Number two, this part includes definitions of words operationally used in the study. So this is just a review of our past lesson, right? You're familiar with this, I know it. Correct, definition of terms. Number three, this part serves as an overview of the research topic under investigation. What's your answer? Okay, the answer is introduction. So it's the first part of the research paper. Okay, number this sets the parameters of the study, which narrow down the scope of inquiry, which serves as an overview of the research topic under investigation. What's your answer? Okay, very good. It's scope and delimitation. Okay, next, number five. This clearly expresses the specific direction or focus of the research problem or inquiry. What do you think, grade 12? Correct. The answer is statement of the problem. All right. So lesson one again is identifying the problem and asking the questions. So starting a research investigation is similar to embarking on a journey. So first you have to project a clear picture of your destination and you have already accomplished this initial step as you have already trimmed down your area of interest into a specific research problem. So in this video, the next step is to strategize how to arrive at the destination, okay? So, okay, so let's have an opening activity for lesson one. So one of the purposes of research is to address the pressing issues in the society, okay? So as a student who is a keen observer and is aware of the local, national, or international affairs, list down three crucial concerns and propose a solution for each. Okay, so for example, problem one is diesel price hike. 
Okay. For the local affair, what's the proposed solution? So if the problem is about diesel price hike, one solution could be to use a cooking oil as a substitute for diesel. Mm. Isn't that unique? Okay. So here's your activity. So problem one, local issue. Number two, national issue. And number three, international issue. So propose a solution for these affairs, okay? So I'm giving you five minutes to write your problem and propose your solution. Okay, so if for example, five minutes is over, then let's proceed to the next part of our lesson. So now that you have formulated a problem, the next step is to accomplish the baseline of your research paper. So you must be able to explain the context of your study by giving its background. So this may aid you in identifying your specific questions for your statement of the problem, as well as your hypothesis, okay? So there's also a need to list down the beneficiaries of your research. So this will be presented in the significance of the study. So you must also set the boundaries of your study by writing your scope and delimitation. A definition of terms must also be furnished to facilitate understanding of the study. So, the so what is the background of the study? So background of the study is an explanation of the context of study, which involves the current data or status of the problem, existing studies about it, and its history that paved the way to the development of the research problem. So it actually explicates the rationale why you as a researcher are conducting the study. So writing this particular part of the paper may lead you to your research questions. Okay, so as you write the background of the study or Introduction, you should take into consideration the following guidelines. Number one, it should clearly state the reason for conducting the study. Number two, it should move from broad to specific. And number three, it should state the current condition of the research problem. Okay, so prior to writing and reading various literature studies, so making an outline is also a helpful tip to facilitate the process. So here is an example of an outline of the background of the study. So first, you can discuss the topic in general. You can start from a holistic or world perspective. Let's say, for example, reading skills and its importance. Okay. So next is you can insert a condition that is directly related to the topic and to the focus of your study. For example, poor reading skills. Next, you can identify the factors contributing to the focus of your study, like for example, factors affecting poor reading skills in general. Next, you can state the current condition in the topic in your school or locality. So here's an example, school's Philippine informal reading inventory or fail eerie result. You can also state the reason why you chose to study the topic. Like for example, you can state the reason of the researcher. Okay, so this is the outline for the background of the study. Next, here's a sample background of the study. So the first paragraph shows the factors contributing to the focus of the study. So let's read on. So Matt, 2013, conducted a study regarding Dioscorea hispida. So Dennis, which is the Malaysian term for yam. So in this or in their previous ethnobotanical survey carried out on the Malay villagers in Pulau Redang, Kuala, Terengganu district in Terengganu. So it was found out that the Oscorea hispida tuber is used as a food or traditional medicine to treat diabetes and shingle infestation for deworming as well as fish poison. So on the other hand, the villagers in Sinamari and Thanarbade, Tangail, Bangladesh, should use the poisonous tuber paste of Dioscorea as poison in hunting. Okay, so that's the first 
paragraph for the background of the study. So the second paragraph indicates the current condition in the research locale, which in the last par while in the last paragraph stated are the reasons of the conduct of the study. Okay, so let's read. While in the Philippines, NAMI or intoxicating yam was investigated to have some insecticidal properties, in the late research of the Department of Science and Technology or DOST, they had proven that this species of yam has various chemical compositions that may negatively affect some various insects. Moreover, the seed also has some poison mimicking cyanide intoxication. So with this being said, the researchers aim to formulate a product with this intoxicating yam by disregarding its in toxicity and instead using it as an advantage. So the researchers intend to make a cheap inorganic termite wood repellent. So again, the last paragraph stated the reasons for conducting this study. Okay? So again, this is sample background of the study. Okay, so let's now proceed to the statement of the problem. So this is the next thing that you need to accomplish. So the statement of the problem has two parts. Um, general statement of the problem or objective and the specific research questions. So aside from being a tool in solving dilemmas in the society, another purpose of research is to guide people towards a better understanding of phenomena, human behavior, human interactions, and other events in daily life. So this premise indicates the importance of meticulously crafting of the research questions as it sets the focus and drives the course of the study. Again, the statement of the problem has two parts, the general statement of the problem or the objective and the specific research questions, okay? Okay, so this is how to formulate the statement of the problem. Let's read the paragraph by Cresswell and Clark in 2014. So the purpose of this ethnography study, so this is the type of study, is to describe, so this is the exploratory and non-directional verb, the training. So this refers to the central phenomenon of the study of ETA teachers from Castilla Sambales, the participants, okay? So for the past 10 years, so it indicates when, okay? To provide insights into the formulation of a continuing education model for indigenous teachers. This states the purpose of your study, okay? Next. Guidelines in formulating specific questions of sub-questions, okay? So number one, begin the research questions with the what or how explanation of the research design if you're writing a qualitative research paper. Number two, why implies an explanation of an occurrence and suggests a cost and effect type of thinking for quantitative research. Number three, focus on a single phenomenon or concept. Okay. Number four, qualitative research uses exploratory and non-directional verbs. The study will discover a grounded theory, seek to understand, if you're writing an ethnography, explore the process of, or for a case study, describe the experiences of, for phenomenology, and report the stories if you're writing a narrative research. Okay. And number five, quantitative research uses directional verbs such as effect, effect, influence, impact, cause, relation, relate, and determine. Okay, I hope that's clear. Examples of specific research questions. So for this research, the title of the study is Perpetuity of Family-Owned Business in the Philippines, a Causal Model. So this study seeks answers to the following questions. Question one, what external factors in the enabling environment influence the family business perpetuity in terms of political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal? Number two, what internal factors in the enabling environment influence the family business perpetuity in terms of succession, planning, family stability, stewardship, family constitution, innovation, flexibility, philosophy of commitment, productivity-based management, governance, power, and professional education. Number three, what causal model best explains the perpetuity of family-owned business using the interplay and external factors? Okay. So next is the hypothesis. 
So a hypothesis is a preconceived idea assumed to be true and is tested for its truth or falsity. So it has two types, the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis indicates that there is no significant difference or relationship between specified populations or variables. So null hypothesis is the hypothesis the researcher will try to disprove or discredit while an alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, is one that states that there is a significant difference, a relationship between specified populations or variables. So significant difference is used when testing whether there is difference between the means of two or more population or variables, while significant relationship is used in situations where one is examining the association between any two sets of variables. That's according to King or Roy of 2004. Okay, so here's an example of a null hypothesis. There is no significant difference between the reading comprehension skills of control group and experimental group before and after differ differentiated instruction. So what about alternative hypothesis? There is a significant difference between the reading comprehension skills of control group and experimental group before the, and after the intervention differentiated instruction. Take note that not all studies test hypothesis. So sometimes a study is designed to be exploratory. Exploratory research intends to investigate a problem that is not clearly defined. Hence, this will not provide conclusive results. Okay. Next is the significance of the study. So what is the significance of the study? This pinpoints the benefits certain groups of people will gain from the findings of the study. So it must start from the most to the least benefited ones. Okay, so here's an example of the significance of the study from this title, Effects of Verbal Bullying to the Academic Performance of Grade 9 Students in Jose C. Payuma Junior Memorial High School. So what's the significance of the study? Verbal bullying is one of the leading causes of mental illnesses such as depression, anxiety disorder, and mood disorder. So school, as studies reported, is one of the places this type of bullying perpetuates in. Despite the many policies implemented to reduce the cases of verbal bullying, still the problem continuously takes place. So this study focuses on the effects of verbal bullying to the academic performance of grade 9 students in Jose C. Payuma Junior Memorial High School, school year 2019-2020. So the result of this study will be valuable to the following to the students that will provide them knowledge about the forms of bullying and how to deal with it once encountered, okay? So let's move on to the school administrators. The results of this study may provide information and may serve as a basis to encourage them to make regulations about the problem. In addition, this may lead them to assuring the full and strong implementation of the existing policies on bullying. Okay. To the teachers, the findings of this study may help them to spread awareness on how destructive verbal bullying can be. So constant guidance from the teachers can also be an upshot of this study. Moreover, teachers may conceptualize activities or other solutions to create a positive and friendly atmosphere inside their classrooms. To the parents, this study may inform them on the possible negative circumstances like bullying that may happen to their children. So as an effect, this may encourage them to guide their children properly. And lastly, to the future researchers, this study will serve as a basis for related topics. A continuation of this study may be done to fill in the gaps of this research that may result to proactive solutions to counter any form of bullying. Okay, so this is again an example of the significance of the study. What about scope and the limitations of the study. So the scope and the limitations of the study state the coverage of the study. So it must answer the following parameters as much as possible. Okay, like for example, what? The topic and the variables to be included. Why? So indicate the general objectives. Where? 
versus specific locale or locality. When, indicate the time frame and how, identify the research design, instrument, and methodology. Okay, next. So here's an example of scope and delimitation of the study. The title is an assessment on the impact of farm to market road projects in Pola, Oriental Mindoro. Okay, so where? This study was conducted in six barangays in Pola, Oriental Mindoro, namely Barangay Kalubasanahon, Barangay Malibago, Barangay Maluan Luan, Barangay Pahilahan, and Barangay Pula. So who? The population considered was limited to those households who were directly affected by the constructed infrastructure farm to market road project. What and why? The study was concerned with one, the impact of the constructed infrastructure farm to market road project on the respondents, and two, the relationship between construction of roads and its impact. So only in terms of the answered household survey questionnaire and perception of respondents and key officials. So the condition of the respondents was to be described also in terms of their demographic profile and other indicators included in the impact assessment household survey questionnaire. Last is how. The study included an evaluation of the economic and social aspects of the beneficiaries before and after the infrastructure farm to market road project as well as of the respondents demographic profile. So income and employment, improved access, and perceived benefits after the infrastructure road was constructed. So key informant interview was also used to gather data, especially in answered items in the survey. So the source is Reynaldo Quintas from his unpublished master's thesis, University of Santa Tomas, 2013. Okay, next. Again, this is an example of scope and delimitation of this study. Conceptual framework, okay, so what is a conceptual framework? It serves as an outline or a blueprint that you can follow in doing your research. It is presented in a flowchart, map, diagram, or narrative form. So when you're using a diagram, it is still a must to include narrative to explain the details. So here you show the variables that influence your research. So variable is anything that has quantity or quality that varies in a research. So for example, if you're studying the COVID-19 outcomes, you might study home life, school and community. So for school, your variables might be learning process and quality of learning. To make your conceptual framework thorough, it is encouraged to make it more detailed, okay? Next, so here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to write the conceptual framework. Number one, you can choose your topic, so it should be within the field of your specialization. Number two, you can do a literature review, go over relevant and updated studies related to your own research. You can use reliable sources of information and use appropriate documentation. Number three, you can isolate the important variables, identify the specific variables mentioned in the literature and show their interrelationships. And number four, generate the conceptual framework. You can build your conceptual framework using the variables studied in the scientific articles you have read. So your problem serves as a reference in constructing the conceptual framework. So in effect, your study will attempt to answer a question that other researchers have not yet explained. So here's an example of a conceptual framework. So the biggest circle has the words outcomes of COVID-19. And it has three branches, like for example, home life, school, and community. And these three variables are the variables that you would like to explain in your research. For home life, the sub variables are relationship and finance. For school, you would like to discuss about learning process and quality of learning. And for community, the two sub variables are economic aspect and social interaction. Next, what about definition of terms? So definition of terms lists down and defines the key terms as used in the study in alphabetical order. So an operational definition refers to a specific definition of concept in a research study. So this is necessary because it will clarify the purpose and direction of the study. So here are examples of a definition of terms. 
So in order to enable better understanding of the study, the following terminologies were operationally and conceptually defined. So first is affixation. So it is a morphological method whereby a bound morpheme and affix is attached to a morphological base in order to create either a different form of the morphological base or a new word with a different definition. Next is coinage. So this word refers to the intervention or creation of a new word or phrase. So in this paper, this word may refer to any process that involves making up a new terms, phrases, and expressions that are not usually found in the dictionary. Contrastive analysis. Conceptually, it is a, the systematic investigation of a pair of languages with the purpose of identifying differences and similarities in their structure. Next is conversion. So it is the process wherein the word's function has been transformed into another, but with no overt change in form. Next is Facebook. So it is an online social media or social networking service that makes easy for people to connect and share with other people. Okay, so our reference is Jan Adams de Magdano, Morphological Analysis of the Language of the Netizens in Social Media, and published Master's Thesis at the Peninsula State University main campus, 2019. Thanks, Jan Adams. So let's have our activity after hearing our discussion in formulating the statement of the problem. So let's formulate a null and hypo alternative hypothesis for each of the following. So for example, taking of aspirin's daily and heart attack risk. So the null hypothesis is taking aspirins daily does not affect heart attack risk, or there is no significant relationship between taking aspirins daily and heart attack risk. What about the alternative hypothesis? So taking aspirins does affect heart attack risk, or there is a significant relationship between taking aspirins daily and heart attack. Now it's your turn for this activity. Formulate a null and alternative hypothesis for number one, effects of temperature on plant pigmentation. Number two, effects of fertilizer on plant growth. Okay, can you take a screenshot of this activity? Next. Okay, so here's an activity for the background of the study, which you may answer right after this video. So outline your background of the study by answering the following questions answer in a complete sentence. So number one, what is the study of your research problem on a holistic national or world perspective? Number two, what is the condition that is directly related to the focus of your study? Number three, what are the factors contributing to the focus of your study? Number four, what is the current status of your research problem in your research local? And number five, why did you choose to study the research problem? Got it? Can you take a screenshot of this activity or write this on your notebook for your reference? Next activity. Okay, activity three is about the significance of the study. So can you please write the title of your chosen study from the previous module? And afterwards, identify at least four beneficiaries of your research and specify the benefits they can get. Can you take a screenshot of this activity so you can answer this right after watching this video? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so last activity is activity force for scope and delimitation of the study. Can you answer the following questions to set the parameters of your study right after this uh, video lesson? So number one, what is the topic of your study and the variables to be included? Number two, why should your study be conducted? Can you state the objective? Number three, where will your study be conducted? Can you state the local? Number four, when will your study be conducted? Can you state the time frame? And number five, how will your study be conducted? Can you state the research design, instrument, and methodology? Okay, so kindly take a screenshot of this activity and find time to answer these questions right after viewing this video, okay? Okay, so for any questions or inquiries, you can find me at ria.novelga001 at deadbed.gov.ph. You can also send me a private message 
at my messenger chat box. It's Ria Reyes Navogas. Okay, so don't hesitate to send me an update, inquiries, or questions related to identifying or formulating a statement of the problem. Thanks for watching. This is Teacher Air of Education Channel. Subscribe now.